If you're watching this channel, it's because you don't enjoy watching the world squander what Christendom built, but you want to do your part. And chances are you've heard me mention a great means by doing just that. Email made by and for Catholics. Check out fide.email. That's F-I-D-E-I dot -E email. Built for Catholic individuals, families, organizations, and groups. They're private, secure, and of course, they're Catholic. And they're offering two months off on your first year for an annual subscription if you enter the coupon code return to tradition without spaces that's the name of this channel without spaces at checkout today's video was a clip from a live stream that had important news that not many of you saw so we will be presenting it here and the important news is this all signs point to a consistory coming in the fall but now what's a consistory consistory is where the pope gets to name New, card, new bishops to the College of Cardinals. These are the, the these are the men who will be active in the next conclave to give us the next pope, whenever that happens. The consistory may be happening by the end of this year. The date isn't exactly firm yet, at least at the time that I'm putting this together. But there's a lot of implications for that, so we go over that today in the video. So, let's go to Gloria TV with, this. I think, this good report here. Their headline is, Next Consistory. 7th of December. Well, <clears throat> Pope Francis has held more consistories than anybody, it seems like, since Vatican II. A consistory is where a archbishop typically is made a cardinal. They're summoned to Rome. There's a big ceremony. They're be they are elevated to the office of cardinal. Right now, there are more cardinals than canon law allows for. The canon law allows for 120 cardinals, but the practice has been to have more than 120 as retirements happen. And if there is not a consistory this year, then next year there's going to be fewer than 120 cardinals pretty early by pretty early in the year. So it's likely you're going to you're going to have several new cardinals made late this year. And December 7th seems like a great time for that. It's been expected. He's done these almost every year of his pontificate. And Polly would be great to be given that honorary being on being made a cardinal, but too old to do anything with the office as a reward because being made cardinal is a reward. It's a sign of faith being placed in the new cardinal or the new uh, that they are basically on board with the reigning Pope, but also um, as a job well done for those older men who are, who are named cardinals. But let's go over this so you can get the details. Francis has held a consistory to create new cardinals every year of his papacy, with the exception of his first in 2021, right, writes David's ruminations.blogspot. This year is already half over, and a number of major events are already planned. In particular, a papal trip to Asia and Oceania, a papal trip to Luxembourg and Belgium, the Synod, and the start of the whole year on 24th of December. That leaves November and most of December. The writer believes that most likely date is Saturday, 7th of December, just before the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. The consistory is usually announced one to two months in advance. Since I suspect that some of the participants of the synod will be on the list, I don't expect it before the synod ends on Sunday, October 27th. There will be several opportunities during the following week. The Angelus on Sunday, 27th of October, the general audience on Wednesday, the 30th of October, and the events around All Saints and All Souls. Note that on 7th of December, there will be 121 cardinal electors out of a total of 236, assuming there are no deaths among the cardinals end quote. So this is, of course, not concrete, but it's reasonable to believe that there's a that, that that will happen this year because 121, remember the limit is 120, and there are going to be people retiring in December and January. They retire from being able to participate in a conclave as soon as they hit the age of 80, and there will be vacancies coming and as, the, as next year progresses. And I actually believe I might be wrong, but I believe Cardinal Seurat hits 80 next year. Although I think I might be wrong about that. But there are cardinals in large numbers retiring, which means the number of cardinal electors that Pope Francis has chosen himself will go up dramatically. The, the proportion of the cardinals that he has chosen goes up. He's already uh, chosen something like 66% of them, and that's going to just go up and increase every year that he remains on the throne of Peter. And I expect Polly to be given the red hat at this consistory for a job well done, even though he won't be able to, starting next year, won't be able to participate. But a little closer to home, the media has been signaling a different concern for Pope Francis that I expect he'll address. 
the church in America, which is too conservative with seminarians being too conservative and too rigid. Keep in mind that a cardinal appointed to the Roman curate leaves a diocese open. Cardinal Supich hit retirement age this year, but is still running Chicago. It's entirely feasible that he will be moved to the Roman curia. Someone like Cardinal McElroy will be promoted to Chicago, leaving San Diego open for a new bishop. There are other potential vacancies coming in the U.S., and consistories give the Vatican ample opportunities to address those concerns, since there are numerous vacancies in the U.S. But the Vatican is very concerned about this, judging from some American magazine stories published this year. So we go here, starting with this one. Why Pope Francis is worried about seminaries and young priests with authoritarian attitudes. Ugh. Look, you will see what they mean by authoritarian attitudes is a Catholic attitude about things, a Catholic attitude about who participates at the altar, who can actually assist at the altar, who does the readings, who the decorum at mass, how the mass is offered, what is taught from the ambo in a homily every Sunday. These are your authoritarian attitudes. From the article, quote, Catholics from the pews to the Pope are worried about young priests. At the October meeting of the Synod on Synodality, Pope Francis gave an unexpected intervention, announcing denouncing clericalism and lamenting the scandal of young priests and seminarians trying on fancy vestments in Roman shops. The Synod's final document echoed some of these concerns, pointing to the formalism and ideology that leads to authoritarian attitudes in some priests and calling for a consultation of seminary formators on how to teach priests to lead in a synodal style, end quote. Authoritarianism in this case means not being sufficiently synodal or being too traditionally minded. If a priest dares to think that he should preach Catholicism and warn people once in a while of the four last things and to take sin seriously, he's apparently authoritarian. If he has preconciliar attitudes about who serves at the altar and having due reverence during the celebration of the mass, that's authoritarian. We know from the data that seminarians and priests ordained in the last few years are much, much more conservative than their forebears, with even secular media lamenting that progressive priests are going to be a thing from the past. And now, while this was not a secular source on this, I will show you, and I'll show you what I mean by this. I'll bring this back to the uh, consistory question here, so you can see how this all fits together. But the Pillar reported on this themselves, too, with this, stu with this headline. Study, liberal U.S. priests facing progressive extinction. <laughs> yeah, for some good news on the subject, here's a quote from that article, because I know you want some good news. Quote, the share of new U.S. Catholic priests identifying as theologically progressive has fallen so low that the phenomenon has all but vanished, according to a report published Tuesday. The 18-page report issued November 7th by the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C., said that when priests were asked to describe their theological outlook on a spectrum from very conservative or orthodox to very progressive, none of those ordained after 2020 described themselves as very progressive. The report included a graph showing that the proportion of priests who identified as somewhat progressive or very progressive fell from almost 70% among those ordained in 1965 to 1969 to less than 5% of, among those ordained in 2020 or later. Researchers said there was a similar drift away from political liberalism and toward moderate and conservative positions. Simply put, the portion of new priests who see themselves as politically liberal or theologically progressive has been steadily declining since the Second Vatican Council and has now all but vanished, the report said, end quote. And that, I believe, is good news in general. And it's upset all the right people. And I suspect this is good news for people outside of the United States as well. But it is a warning about the coming consistory. Cardinals get moved around, leaving vacancies in major dioceses, which causes a downstream effect of new bishops being made. Any new bishop made by Francis is absolutely going to be on board with his desire to remake the church and squash this problem. We've already seen this take effect in some dioceses already. If you remember the story I reported on a month or two ago, the Vatican is being proactive by implementing bans on podcasts in Jesuit seminaries. And if it's in Jesuit seminaries, then it's in other seminaries as well. Remember, the one of the things that that previous American Magazine article I told you about said was that they need to actually talk to seminary formators, meaning these are the priests in charge of formation of 
future priests, that they need to talk to them. And so here is a reminder of how seriously they're taking this. This is from June. Headline, the changing face of seminary formation, group therapy, digital detoxing, and more listening. That digital cleansing is banning shows like this one. Taylor Marshall, who is explicitly named in that article, as you'll recall, as well as others. The article explicitly declares that to be the case. They believe they can that the internet is the reason young seminarians and young priests are more conservative than their forebears. It's not because they've seen the decline in the church in real time, and they have read old books and can see that new things in the church don't don't exactly line up with what the church has always taught. No, 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 no. They believe it's because of Taylor Marshall, which is so incredible that it's just funny. The Vatican is well aware of the changing face of the American priesthood and wants to do something to stop this problem from continuing. And a consistory is a good place to start by placing Bergolians into positions of authority in the, in the hierarchy and in the, the local places in the church. Again, Cardinal Supich hit 75 this year, which as a local ordinary means he's he hit retirement age. But Pope Francis chose to keep him in place, which is his prerogative. But there's a cardinal who is not an archbishop of the United States who may very well get moved to that position, and that is Cardinal McElroy. So don't be surprised if you see Cardinal McElroy get uh, moved to Chicago and maybe even Supich get moved out of Chicago into the Roman Curia. One of the rumors has been this year that he's going to get moved to the uh, the to dicastery for the liturgy to work under to work with uh, Cardinal Roach because Supich has been a good loyal warrior on the issues of uh, the traditional mass and he doesn't speak Italian but Archbishop Roach is an Englishman so they could work well together. The effect this has is you start seeing the uh you start seeing a, somebody made a cardinal move to a better diocese that fits them better and then there's a domino effect of bishops getting moved around and new bishops being made and there are plenty of openings already in the united states so there is an impetus to create these bishops and anytime you see a new bishop i get emails sometimes from people asking what i think of this i have no idea most of the time about new bishops because they're usually just auxiliary bishops that no one's ever heard of. But all you have to do is go look to see where they worked, who they worked under, or read a few of their homilies or public writings, and you can see usually where they line up. Oh, Dale Jackson is... There's a person who is repeating some of the silliest Protestant stuff, and I'm having a hard time because the live chat is very, very... Very, very full. Dale, you're gone. Bye now. <laughs> oh, man, that's a, it's a good time. It's a good time. All right, folks, let me know what you think about this in the comments. I'm, I am curious what people think because do you believe that Palia will be promoted for, you know, a job well done that he has, even because, again, you can give a cardinal – you can get, make someone an honorary card, essentially an honorary cardinal in their retirement years. That actually does happen quite frequently. It's a definitely a job well done kind of statement. Do you think that's going to happen with him? Let me know in the comments, please. Do you, uh, do you believe that there will be a, a consistory this year? New cardinals made. It, on paper, it looks like there, there's necessity for one. You move it'll just happen early next year before Lent. Let me know what you think about this in the comments, please. And yes, hit the like button if you haven't. It does help. As the sharing this on social media, that helps a lot too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.